All right, there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sweet Pea, or John Sweet Pea, whatever you prefer to call me, but I prefer to be called Sweet Pea for short, since that's what I use for my live streaming. And this is going to be my first upload on this new YouTube account. So we pick the English option there. And I've already had a bit of a problem with my exploit recording. I actually did a 40 minute recording earlier, but exploit kind of derped on me and it crashed. Anyway, we're going to watch the introduction to this game, because it's pretty good. Sorry if the sound is all off. So, this is Dynasty Warriors 3, one of my all-time favorite games ever. But the PS2 came out in 2002. Check out the options real quick, just to make sure things in order. So yeah, I actually had done a 40 minute recording this earlier, and then it didn't record. Didn't save the file, exploit crashed, and I had to do it all again. But this time, at least I know to pick a different character to make the first two a little less boring. Because it was a bit of a grind, let me tell you. Not exactly the best way to uh, make a good impression on this game, to say the least. Although this game is pretty good. But anyway. So here's attempt number two in an upworld. And as you can see, it's on normal. So that's versus mode, which allows you to challenge a friend. Challenge mode, which allows you to fuse challenges. The database, which... Um, Gives you sort of some background details about what this story is based on. It's based on a Chinese novel called Romance of the Three Kingdoms, which is used for quite a lot of inspiration in China. And in its games, if you've ever played like a Asian MMORPG or such like, you might see a couple of games based off the stuff. Uh, free mode is here, that gives you to play without the story, just allows you to build up your character a bit. But we're going to head straight into Muzu mode. Which is basically the story mode of the game. And there are three factions in the game, basically. Well, at least three main ones that we will be playing as. There are others as well, but you can't play as the stories unless you buy the expansion Extreme Legends. So this is the Shu side, the green side. They are like Honor, Protect the Poor, and all that. And they consist of Xiao Yun, the sort of figurehead of the game, Guan Yu with his epic beard. And Shang Fei, which is kind of an aggressive guy. Full Wei, the blue faction, which are kind of like, you know, America. They've got all the power, they've got the forces, they want to expand and conquer. So, okay, they're not quite like America, but in terms of size and power, they, they're kind of like America. They have, they have all the good stuff, the numbers, the muscle, the officers, and they want to take over the world. <laughs> So, they have Xiao Hu Dun, guy with an eye patch. He's pretty neat. Dan Wei, who's. There's a bit of a skinhead, I suppose, but he's actually kind of rear guarded. He does a lot of defense. And this interesting character, Shang He, who is. <laughs> he's interesting. You'll see later on, maybe. And for the third faction, the red faction, we have Wu who are the more family and tradition oriented side. They, they're they the second most, um, in terms of numbers, they have the second highest terms of numbers, and they have a combination of tricky strategies and stuff. Not quite as powerful as Wei in terms of muscle, but second best. Pretty strong though. They have, to start with, Shou Yu, who's a handsome looking devil with a sword. Sun Shang Jiang, who's an interesting character in her own right. I think she marries Liu Bei later on, according to the novels. 
and Hong Guai. This I bash things. I use bombs. Yeah, he'll be useful for wait a minute. So I think last time I recorded, I started with this guy, but this first mission is kind of awkward. So we're gonna try someone else. Who shall we play as? Where shall I begin my epic campaign? How about we start with Wei? I'm gonna try Zahu Hoon for a change. We'll start with Wei. Ah, good. This is exactly the mission I wanted, as opposed to last time. Here we can see some scenes of devastation, it looks like. I'm gonna fall over. Ouch. Pretty brutal there. Brother, let's go. There we see Shu sort of building up this stuff. It's finally time. Yes. Here we see Wu building up. And here's us. Way. Mighty powerful way. And there's the yellow turban encampment. The rats are gathering. <laughs> Don't be so hasty. How oh, dare you call them rats? They're more like mice. And you can see the great voice acting at work there. It's pretty cheesy to be honest. But that's why we love it. So, the Yellow Turban Rebellion. This is what sort of most of the uh, characters start out as. Not all of them, but a fair amount. This is pretty much the first one of the first missions of the game, historically wise, set in one of the earliest time periods, say 180s. Maybe. So let's get an introduction from this guy. In the spring of the year 184, led by the leader Zhang Zhao, followers of the religious group known as the Way of Peace rose up in rebellion across the land. Their actions fueled by discontent with the decadent and corrupt Han Dynasty. This uprising became known as the Yellow Turban Rebellion due to the yellow cloths the followers wore around their heads. The power of the Yellow Turbans knew no boundaries, instantly spreading throughout the plains of central China. Sounds pretty good. The beleaguered Han sent out a call for help across the land to organize a campaign against the Yellow Turbans. With hopes of a better future for the Chinese people, brave men and women answered this call of duty and thus begins one of the most turbulent eras of Chinese history known as the Three Kingdoms. And so it begins! So, we have a bunch of units. There's our commanding officer, He Jin, hiding in the castle, cowering away. And a couple of his minions, and there's Wu Bei, Sun Jian, and our leader, Cao Cao. And they've got a bunch of people as well. There's Sang Zhao, Zhang Wang, a bunch of others. Them. So let's see what the conditions of the battle are. The conditions are we must defeat Sang Zhao, who seems to be fairly close to us actually. And we must prevent Hi Jin from being defeated by the Yellow Turbans. And Sao Hudun, he uses a scimitar, sort of a sword. And as you can see, you will unlock other weapons, which will allow to you more max hits. And the fourth weapon you must unlock in hard mode by completing certain conditions, which are kind of vague. You have to look them up, I think. You can also unlock items as you go as well. Up to 25, you get these in battle from killing officers and stuff. And we also have bodyguards. Start out with two, you can get more later on, and we can change what type they are. So we can have swords, spears, pikes, bows, crossbows. I think I'll make mine with spears because that's pretty useful. I'm not so sure if there's a difference between spears and pikes, but I don't, I don't think we'll try the um, ranged ones for now. We'll go for some spearmen, I think, and we can base mass them to attack or defend. We'll make them defend for now. Bodyguards are kind of useless to begin with for the most part. They have occasional use, but they, they become useful later on when you can get quite a few of them. So let's begin this 90-minute mission. Don't worry, it doesn't take 90 minutes. They're very generous with the time limits. Basically, maps are either 90 minutes long or 30 minutes. Once the 90 minutes can usually be done in about 30 or 40, even less if you know what you're doing. And 30 minute missions are a bit more stressful. Go! Ye children of the 
Run straight at that wall. Ouch. Break the siege of the yellow turbans. <laughs> Looks like they're running straight into a wall in that cutscene. Run into this wall for me. <laughs> so, as you can see here, we have the game overview. You can press just to explain how the combat works as we charge into battle against the yellow turbans. You basically have three kinds of attack. Your first one is you press square and you can perform up to four hits on these guys. Pretty simple stuff. And this will expand later on as you... Uh, you can also press triangle for a charge attack, which breaks enemy guard and also clears them out of the way for you. And you have a super muzu attack, which you do by pressing circle when the meter is full. But you can also combine into sort of combos, right? If I press square, then triangle, I can lift an enemy up into the air. Try and demonstrate me now. Like so. I can come up with a charge attack. Nice and easy. You flaming idiots! Take this! Take my boulders! He's really dropping boulders on me. <laughs> I love that. The old turbans are a mix of the uh, rebellious and the magical. <laughs> the game more ridiculous and weighted than the games. Believe me, this is, this is nothing compared to what they're making you with. Anyway, your second attack is if you press square twice and then triangle, you do a stun attack, which will stun enemies, but it hits. Right, so you can see him with the dizzies. I'll try and do it again. Of course. And now the Muzu attack, press circle when you meet us full and you execute. Makes you invincible for a brief period of time and clears our enemies out, but you have to charge up by taking hits in battle or by holding down circle and charging up. And over here, there's a health bun, which gives you health. And when you're looking out, they drop from enemy commanders. That will stun him. The third attack you can do is if you press square three times and then triangle, you perform a sort of AoE attack, which basically clears out enemies all around you. But this will charge up your super bar instantly. I'll just demonstrate. There we go. Full charge. Okay. All that. And you unlock other combos later on as your weapon gets stronger and you can do more max hits at once. So Houdoun doesn't have much AoE because... The heart oh, is a dead. Long live the yellow dragon. Here's the boss, Sang Yao. He has a flaming staff. And he's actually who we need to defeat as well, so we better kill him. If we kill him now, this map may be over. You can also press L2 to toggle energy bars on and off on each character, but I leave them turned on. You can press R2 to change the map to a close-up view or a far-off view. I'll mostly be keeping that in the far-off view unless I feel like it. And this is this will give you a temporary attack boost of two times your current attack damage for 30 seconds. Very useful, really. And go, oh, I'm getting my ass beat. This is painful. Humanity. Oh, there you go. The flaming staff. I defeated an officer. Didn't stand a chance. But wait. I have no time for the other But wait a minute, he can teleport! Oh my god. He really is a wizard of some sort. We must fight well. Yes, you must. So you can also, if you hold down R1, you can also use arrows for a distance. Bonk. And you can also attack with two kinds of things. You can attack with normal attack, and you can also use a powerizing arrow, which is a bit stronger. That's one miss because it probably went through a friendly. And it appears Sang Jiao is attacking the headquarters, so we're going to have to hold off this attack and go straight over there. Yeah, Sangjiao's kind of an awkward bugger in this map. <coughs> he teleports a lot. So we're going to have to go in the palace and save the Grand Master before he gets his ass kicked. And while I'm just bumbling along here, I'll just tell you a few more things about the game. Uh, you can probably see the morale system on the top right. That basically dictates how well the AI does in defeating the opposition. 
more morale you have, the better the AI clears out enemies for you, and the lower the morale, well, things are going bad and they're going to lose easily. And you increase morale by killing troops and officers and wiping them off the game map, so by defeating Sang Jiao, I would have taken his morale out of the equation, and here he is again. I'm Sang Jiao, and I'm going to teleport into the base as I can. See, I'm taking a bit of a hit there, but I'm just going to... Take a lot of damage. I sort of do play aggressively, so you can also block by pressing L1, which will allow you to prevent damage, but it can be broken up with a charge attack or so forth. So I'm just going to kill off his guards first. So I'm taking a lot of hits, but there you go. There's your stun, the double move, and he's out. This one will refill both your health and your Muzu charge. Kind of think of it like your sort of magic, you know, sort of your get out of jail free card attack. And you'll be using it a hell of a lot, so get used to it. Sang Jiao is distracted. I'm not a priority, am I? i make you a priority. I'll swing my sword and increase my range for one attack. Oh, he's using his, which is to use a flame staff whip there. He will just be a... Uh, Basic strategy these guys is usually to try and get behind them, but also you can just let them attack you. Not to get hit, I'll try and show you here. You can get behind them, you can just clobber them pretty easily, suging their find the finishing touches. I defeated an officer. Charge attack takes care of the rest. When all else fails, attack! When all else fails, teleport and escape the situation, you pussy. Now we're going to get out of here because I need to go and help Wu a bit, for reasons you're about to see. And also I'm thinking, actually no, I changed my mind, I changed my mind, I don't need to do that, I need to... Uh, uh oh, what's this? Homie, homie! Oh my god, he froze the river! Oh dear, that's not good. Oh no, the grand attack begins! Oh boy, this is Sang Jiao's great plan. After you beat him twice, he freezes the river, his forces cross over, and you need to get them out pretty quick actually, otherwise you're going to lose. So we're going to go off and kill some officers, which is usually the best way to win these maps, is just to kill the officers, scrub the morale out, prevent the enemy from doing anything significant, so I'm just going to quickly check the map there to see if we can help our cow cow buddies. Or way buddies even. So, as you progress, you've probably seen I've gained attack and defense. Those are permanent additions to your character, they will be added immediately. Items will also give you bonuses as you unlock them, and there is a cap on how much attack and defense you can get, obviously. But to build up your character, he starts off relatively squishy and he'll become pretty strong. Eventually I won't be taking any hits really or anything that will cancel my attacks from anything upset officers really. Another army. Oh no, another army, what will you do? Quick, is there a basement in this castle I can hide in? He did pretty much just hide in this castle for the entire mission, so... I defeated an officer. You certainly did, buddy. And there he tells you he defeated an officer. Let's get a little quote from him. Each one has their own quotes, of course, which is pretty good. You don't want the enemy to get too close into the castle, though. So, you want to be killing these officers pretty quickly, actually. For the most part. I think he was... Ooh, snap. That guy had a bit of a sting on him. I think he was over here. Check. Nope. More that way. Ah, there he is. Sang Men Sheng. You know we should stay quite close to your officers, but this is like crisis point, so we really need to kind of very quickly eliminate as many as possible. Should be okay. This is the first mission. We shouldn't have too many props. Again, get behind him. Before you move, if he hits you, just wait till he finishes and then pop your own. Pretty simple, they do get a bit trickier later on, they will use different tricks, 
right? It'd be hard to knock down. You won't let you pound him so easily, so you have to be more careful. Min Shang, no problem! He is defeated. Excellent work. That should raise a bit of morale. Yes! Get out of here! I'm dead. Silly person. There's another officer over there. Yan Zeng. Yes, I think I'll get rid of you as well. Since they are invading the castle quite heavily at this point, and we really don't want that to happen, do we? We don't want to fail on our very first recording. That would be terrible. Yeah. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, this guy's not very strong. The ones that have a bit more muscle could knock you over and keep you just open to attack. But if Dean is the first mission, it shouldn't be that difficult, so we just whack him around a bit. Get behind him. Down he goes. Attack goes up. And his officers retreat, which is something that happens a lot in this game. If you take out the um, central figure, because the, all the, all the um, troops in the game basically come in packs of five. Except for a few officers who bring eight. But if you take out the central figure, you can basically um, make them flee. And they won't come back. You're like, ah, we've lost our CO. Let's get out of here. It's time to retreat. We have no willpower to do the job ourselves or whatever. And these are gate captains. Gate captains basically are kind of like reinforcement spawn points. If you take out the gate captain in a certain area, the enemy will not be able to respawn. We can't hold them. Oh, you can hold them. Come on, dude. Not that Too easy. Problem. Take him down. So now I've taken care of the gate captain. You'll notice that one of the pins, sort of on the edges of the map, have disappeared for the enemy. So now they can't respawn their troops through the gate. So therefore, the enemy will stop spawning around here, and eventually, if we kill them all around here, we'll have cleared the area completely. I don't know why I'm killing that guy. It's kind of pointless to kill the rest of the gate guards once the captain's down, especially since we have more pressing matters to attend to. Maybe help Wade to sort of back up Shu there, since it looks like the guy who was throwing the boulders is now coming down the mountain. Try and Take the castle out. So much for the strategy of hanging on a mountain and throwing boulders at people, eh? But for the most part, early on, you do want to kind of stay with your commanding officers a bit. Because you're going to take a lot of damage. And then later on, when your character's powered up, you can pretty much do what you want. Until the later missions, and then you will want to stick to your friends to save them out of a tricky stick. Bit of a tricky predicament. And every time you get 50 kills, you get a little notification. You're awesome and stuff. And things are going bad for Wu. Maybe we should go and help them. I need the AI to take care of this little small army and we'll go help Wu. I do suspect we might be too late though. I think we might have already lost them. Oh dear. Oh dear. You'll probably notice, by the way, that the tick is a little slow to update, basically, so... In some earlier games, it's really fast. It's like zip, 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 zip. But in this game, it's a little slow, so someone could have been wiped out already, and the game will keep updating on you. So, at the moment, Heejin appears to be safe, so we're gonna try and rescue Sunjian and push back this tide of evil. Hopefully, he won't die before we get to him, or else we're gonna have to go into the castle. Come on, Sunjian, you can make it. It's only a it's only a thousand this yellow turban guys, please don't die on me, please don't die on... Again. Yes we are, we're taking a gamble bodyguards, but Sun John, if we can save him we might be able to salvage the west. Boy do we need to salvage the west. There we go, wait for him to open and then you can just get a cheap hit with the Muzu if you want. You're stronger way to run. You'll just be turned for these guys. But right now we're kind of squishy. Oh, deadlock! Whenever a deadlock happens, taps taps square like crazy. Basically means you've attacked each other at the same time, and whoever taps the more wins allows you to get a free hit on your opponent. I defeated an officer. 
can see there, he's dropped another defense, so I get a bit more defense, and Xinjiang will hopefully be saved. Hopefully. And it looks like we've kind of missed the boat here, so we do need to go and find the... There it is, Sangliao. I tried to press my Muzu attack, then I didn't have it available. <laughs> silly me. I am so silly. Now... And then, you want to use the common troops to kind of beat up on the other guys, so I... You basically think of them as cannon fodder for kind of a super attack. It kind of helps sometimes. You want health, you really don't want to die, you just beat a few of them a few times, and then... There you go. Kill the guy now. Yep. Pretty comfortable there. This is not going to work badly, actually. So, Sang Leung is defeated. And we're just going to keep on the mobile offensive here because we really want to get that morale up as quickly as possible. So, now Sang Leung's defeated. We're about halfway. That's not good. Ang Fu Song, if he falls, He Jin will pretty much be exposed and we'll have to save his ass. He can no longer hide in the castle forever. But if we keep the morale going, we should be able to save him and Sun Jian, hopefully. I'm gonna kill this guy, get the defense. They always drop defense bonuses. So if you're looking for some defense, that's the way to do it. And actually, I'm gonna go clear this other gate as well. Which is kind of nearby. Maybe it gives Sun John a breather from fighting so many darn turbans by himself. His bodyguards are completely wiped out. Not good for this guy. But again, it's the game where one guy can take on an army and win. So, you know, you always feel like the hero in this game. And you do have to do everything yourself, pretty much. But that's, that's a deliberate part of the game, you know. You're the hero, this is your story, you do all the hard work, you get the glory, you get to kick ass and save Sun Jian, who's all by himself, and he's the leader of Wu, you know, they also didn't protect him well enough, so Sun Jian's going to have to be careful, I'm going to have to leave you a sec buddy, please hang on in there, I'll close this gate so that no more of these filthy peasants annoy you. There we go, we can walk along the river, which is frozen. We wouldn't be able to do this before. Sang Jiao decided to freeze the river with his staff and stuff. Take out this guy, and then... Yeah, I can see there, they spawned behind him. That's because the gate captain's there. You take out the gate captain, they don't spawn in. Everyone has an easier time, and you can eventually mop up and clear the map. Sorry if the sounds have to look a little bit. I... Oh no, Sun Jian. Oh dear me. That is not good. We should have stuck with him a bit longer, but... Well, we still have two major factions of the three who have contributed to coming to help, so we might be okay. I can't wait for here, because <laughs> I just feel like it. Alright, we've cleared the gate anyway, that's the important thing, so now we just kind of want to... I think the next thing we should do is help Shu out, I think. You know, we could have, we could have sold the castle head on, actually. Let's see. Yeah, I think we'll do that. So Shu. Shu can take care of themselves. They're a small bunch of people anyway at this point. We are the mighty way. We shall smash into enemy lines and crush everything. This is Zhang Liang. He's pretty much just a dead army backing him up now, so we'll just quickly wipe out his uh, captains and generals here. And the uh, peasants will retreat. We'll see the last of them. At least some of them should retreat anyway. They're kind of following a dead guy. He is dead. Yeah, he is P1 Shao. Probably pronouncing that wrong as well. Oh well. K1 Shao? Oh, we've been stunned. This is why it's dangerous to go in the middle all by yourself. You get surrounded. But, on the plus side, you have so much ammunition, so much muscle and meat shields to build up that super cool meter. In no time at all, you can reach another brief invincibility attack. Again, there we go. Whack. 
It's not too hard, so we're being allowed to do this. And he can we knocks us over towards the bonus. So we will just pop it a troop there. We'll try and see if we can't find Oh no. Hung Fu Song is also in trouble. He's also on his own. Jeez, these old turns work fast. This guy's in trouble. We're gonna have to help this. Let's see if we can help this guy a little bit, you know. We don't want him to meet the same fate as Sun Jong, do we? That was too much. You know, seeing two people die when we could have done something would be He's actually going to try and heal here because the um, the officers do try and heal themselves if you're nearby. And what do you know, there's um, La Yon Yi. Soon to be dead. Cheeky with a charge attack at the end. Look at that flying knee attack from behind. Completely misses the target. Very close here. We'll just hang on a little bit. Also, if you pick up a health kit and your bodyguards are nearby, they will also gain the health as well. That's how they regenerate health. They basically tighten with you. I think he's just used a health power up there. As you can see, now it's a bit more health. And they will use... Enemy officers will also use these up to a certain point when they have an opportunity. So you can break it, you can pretty much prevent them from using it. Just going to keep the wobbling guys here. Very pretty much. I'm going to get my temporary defense bonus and the attack. And. I think you'll be okay now, so who's left? And let's... Oh, you got to watch out for the gates there to watch you off a bit. A bit awkward, but you do. At this point, I think we'll go help Shu, and then we'll brace ourselves for the final battle. Get a bit more experience and... Uh, stat increases along the way. <coughs> tell you a bit more about the game why not you could probably see an arrow counter in the bottom left which gives you a certain number of arrows you can also use uh, muzu arrows which is basically like a rapid fire as long as the uh, muzu bar lasts and as long as you have arrows and you regain arrows from archers oh no oh shut up Ejin. you'll be fine I'm not going to go save him because it's probably only a minor bunch of peasants and at this point they're actually starting to attack Sang Zhao head on. He's actually come out of the castle now. Now that he's comfortable that the enemy is not going to take his pretty powers to pieces. We're going to go find the guy who was dropping the balls earlier. Is he still around? I don't think he is. I think they're actually finding nobody. Yeah, they've actually defeated him. I must have missed that. Well, in that case, what the hell is Shu doing here then? I'm wasting my time. I need to go over this way and help guys on the right hand side. Top right. And as you play through the game you will unlock different characters based on whether you defeat them, whether you complete a certain mission or a certain side and you can play this mission in various different ways. And you can see with Wei we started in the bottom and sort of circled around a little bit. If you play as Wu you start on the left and if you play as a Shu guy you start on the right. So the mission does vary a little bit. You'll have a slightly different objective to accomplish, and each of the three has their own tricks. Always didn't really have any. Sang Jiao will appear pretty much near the start point for whichever side you picked on, and you have to clear him out or you can ignore him. If you want. Shoot guys will have to deal with the boulder guy, we will have to deal with Zhang Riong. We get to deal with, well, Zhang Yang, I think, if I remember the name correctly. We're just dealing with Yi Yi. Go over here. Is, is this is our gate? It is, yeah. We need to go and close the gate across the frozen river because while it was a great avenue for them to attack the castle, it also gives us a great avenue to attack them. So they failed the bomb rush at the castle and are now going to be made to pay the price with my sword of justice. Minute just a sword. Minute a good sword. Until sort of cutting your body into many tiny pieces. How's that? Gate captain, not going to fight. He's going to die. Oh, his bodyguard seems to have other plans. Down goes, I have secured the gate. My troop have secured the gate. 
Yes, my troop. Right. I think I did all that work, didn't I? Are my bodyguards trying to claim some credit in that? I think they might have minorly injured one of the enemy's tolls, but here's he is. Pretty easy. Most of them are, to be fair, in the L turbans. They don't really have much power. You know, it's a, it's a beginning mission, you know, you can't be too dead. That would be terrible. I defeated an officer. It's kind of a bit stressful, though, if you wet and circ the castle. I know the first few times I played this mission, I didn't know the game so well. I was really panicking when they attacked Egypt. I was like, oh god, what do I do? What do I do? And then he got wiped out, and that was the end of it. Whack. So after this, we will be uh, moving on to the next mission, which I thought would be pretty neat. Oh, HQ is in trouble again. Oh, dear me. You don't need reinforcements. Look at the morale, dude. You, you're going to handle them just fine. So I want my lesson from the 40-minute uh, stream that didn't record. Well, I played a Shao Yun, which got swallowed up, unfortunately. He's just bitching for no reason. You usually do want to pay attention when it says HQ is in trouble, but then sometimes it's like, oh no, we're actually just being attacked, it's not that much of a big deal. It's kind of weird though. They'll make you think it's a big threat, and then it's like, it's nothing! I'm being attacked by a few mousy privates. Please send back up. And at other times, he will be under attack, and you'll ignore him, and he'll lose, and the game's over. So really, these big, big ass generals can't handle a few scraps. They just want to hide and be like, ah, we don't want to, we don't want to fight today. We want to hide and be pussies. Can you handle them for me, please? You can also do a, you can also do a, a sort of a chart, a sliding attack. If you run around for long enough and then press square. Thank you. You will do this. Not that. I think it's in the K when you have a little. No. You do long enough and whoosh! I don't work with my sword. I'm gonna clear more of these guys out. So, Sam Hoondoon doesn't have much range, but he's pretty powerful, really. He's got a decent set of attacks. Quite quick with that scimitar. He's got an eye patch. He's got a nice cape. Can't really change the outfits, unfortunately, so he's going to look like this the entire time. So, I'll let you is a uh, up. Nope. The battle reaches its exciting conclusion. Will Sang Yell have any more tricks up his sleeve, or is he just going to be bomb rushed? Which is mostly what happens in these games. You can see all his army is defeated. He's got a gate left on the far right, but they won't spawn any troops. At some point, they just when based on morale and sort of stuff, like you'll see the gate, you'll probably see a little red dot on the right side of the map. They won't spawn any more troops because it's kind of pointless. And some gates in the game are actually completely useless. That nothing will ever happen. You'll probably see that a couple of times if you really observe. Here's Sang Zhao again. Now he has a bit more health, he's a bit more trickier to defeat. So now into this final boss phase. But He's outnumbered. Maybe about 200 to 1 at least. So we're just going to lose your charge a little bit here. Maybe take care of his guards. One Hayes Troop has been defeated. You just get a little trickier to be fair. Oh, and there he's executing a combo I can't do yet because my sword doesn't have enough attacks. That would be not for much longer. So we gotta be careful because if we went in and do that flame attack on us, we might take us down a little bit. But again, same strategy applies, just maybe he's a bit stronger now because he's since the last time he'll get to respawn, so take out his guards, that will help a lot. Now we'll do that first. Oh, that burn attack hit stings. And now we've activated Super Muzu Mode, which is basically the same as the regular mode, but when you're on low health, you do this. Really burn the enemy to death. Of course you're on low health, but your Muzu Bar will now charge automatically. It can be useful sometimes, but you're on low health, so keep in mind that you'll probably want to regenerate your health as soon as possible. But you know, sometimes you can abuse this and just stick with it for the rest of the game. Play very defensively and... Try and take care of his generals. Isolate him. 
left now. That's it. Looks like Luzi has fallen to the Yellow Dragon. Oh. Oh, my body may die. My spirit will live forever. Ah, I'm dead. Good riddance. And the hand forces are triumphant. And I strike a little pose. I have a pipe patch, you see. Awesome! And we succeed in our first mission, Yellow Turban Rebellion. Alright. And then after each battle you get a review of what happened, pretty much telling you who you killed, who they killed, how the battle went. So as you can see we beat Sang Jiao. He doesn't show up on the map until his final form. As you can see we went over to very quickly went back to our allies, cleared up all his minions. Got the gate. And then we decided, hmm, I think Wu needs our help. Whoosh, let's go help Wu. Bye bye, Zhang Liang, you are dead. Then we cleared the gate there, helped Sun Jian, but unfortunately, he had no friends and he died. Then Pei Wan Shao was next. We went and helped Hong Fu Song. Zhang Bao was defeated by Shi Chu, sorry. We went over to the right. Cleared out he in his gate. Took the final gate that would matter in the mission. And then finally after much after a massive Zerg rush, Luzi fell, but Sang Jiao followed and the mission was over. And he can fast forward this so he can pretty much go I succeeded. And afterwards you get a couple of weapons. This is basically the stat system of the game for the most part. Or at least half of it. Get a weapon with stats. This will give us more HP and a mounted defense when we ride horses. Maybe we'll get to do that next time. As it's the only one, we will take it because it gives us a bit more HP and a bit of defense. And there we have wing boots, the items, which will. This basically means you jump higher. It will give us more defense. And later on, those items will receive more power. So, for example, you might get a plus 20 defense later and you want to get them as high as you can. And then you get a rating screen telling you how well you did. The more people you kill, the more points. And then worthy opponents, pretty much any officer, whether it's a main one or a sub-officer. get a lot of points from that since we took out nine guys of worthwhile notes. Clear time, 28 minutes, not too bad. We'd be able to do that a lot quicker, of course, when we're stronger. Oh, and we actually got a bonus, a positive bonus this time. Probably because we did so well, <laughs> but we lost to <laughs> General Wu and some other guy no one cares about, but... Yay! Bonus! 6,000 points. And then you put those points towards your uh, character development. Ranked up to level 15. Then as you get stronger, you get sort of life bonuses, and you... Eventually will be able to use more bodyguards, they'll gain some bonuses. See, they're now fighters. So they're a bit stronger, they'll be a bit more aggressive. We're now ranked 13 ourselves, so we'll get a bit more defense. You know, general sort of stats, not too much. Most of it's based off your weapon and items to some extent. But you also get a fair amount based off your class. So to boost you up a bit. And that's it. And you get rankings, like high score. Alright, we got more than 500 kills. Gotta quit it in 15 minutes. Matter, to be honest. Just gonna pop a quick save. As you can see. <laughs> and there we go. Battle of Blue Isle Gates. Ah, one for next time, I think. We'll just be skipping that. Get another cutscene there. Another Allied Coalition mission, but we'll be skipping that for now because this is the end of the recording. Alright, so, thank you for watching my first ever Let's Play recording on YouTube. Uh, feel free, if, you, if you've made it this far, congratulations, I'm glad I'm not that boring. <laughs> so, thanks for watching, uh, feel free to leave any comments, criticism, feedback, whatever you feel like, in the comments below, and you know, 
Let me know how I got on. Let me see if I was okay, whether I was a bit boring, if there's anything you want to see in detail. And I will join you next time when we will continue Saihu Doom's mission at Huau Gate. Thank you all very much for watching, and goodbye for now.